Hello everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Elite Dangerous update. And before we begin today, I just want to take a moment to apologize for the lateness of this video. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been spending a lot of time on my job, and I really haven't had much time or energy to devote to all of my videos. And for that, I just want to say I'm truly sorry. And for that very reason, you're going to get a sort of double feature today. I'm going to combine the two videos that I have planned into this one video. That and while the carrier was in the bubble sector, I really didn't get much of a chance to go exploring. So there's not much footage there. What was there was pretty much the same. It was the same blue hue over all the same planets or same kinds of planets. So I didn't really think that would have made a good video. What I will say, however, is that the views from outside the bubble nebula were way better. And I did take a couple screenshots. They're on my page in Steam. If you are following me, that is. I'll put a link down below. But yeah, what you see here is pretty much what you see everywhere in the bubble nebula. Lots of blue. And really, because of that, I started to take the time to start planning the next expedition. The one that will ultimately take us to the galactic core. But I'm getting ahead of myself there. As that expedition will likely take place towards the end of this year and take us into the next. I will be releasing more information about that expedition in the coming weeks with a target launch date of possibly the second or third week of November. But again, like I said, that's a story for another time. For now, I'd rather talk about the penultimate waypoint, the Bubble Nebula. Even though we didn't stick around for a long time here, it really is a location I think everyone should try to visit, at least on their way out to the Formidine Rift. Although personally, I would recommend saving it for your trip back. Sort of a dessert to your expedition. I will say, having nebula backdrops to the carrier jumps make them far more sexy. <laughs> and that brings us to our final waypoint. A nebula that is not too far outside the bubble, that I call the Beacon Nebula. AKA NGC 7822. No, that's not it. That's actually a distant galaxy. But I do call it the Beacon Nebula because at a distance of about 2,000 light years, the hot blue stars call to you as if they're beacons in the night. At a range of about 500 light years, you start to resolve those stars into individual components. I actually remember on my very first expedition out to the Formidine Rift, I never intended to stop by this nebula, but I started to see these bright lights in the middle of nowhere. I have rounded a star, and there they were. And I had to investigate. I don't know how many of you have flown around in deep space only to come across something that caught your eye and you had to go see it yourself. And for those of you who have yet to make it out into deep space, always keep your eye open. 
you never know what interesting or beautiful sights you may find. For example, take the planet that Gorgon Research Facility is orbiting. It's literally buried in rings. These rings extend millions upon millions upon millions of kilometers into space. It's absolutely huge. And this was the first time I saw something like this in the game. I remember first coming to the system back in 2017, amazed at just how big these particular rings were. Understand, at the time, I've only seen images and screenshots of ring systems like this on the forums. This was the first time three years ago me seeing something like this with my own eyes. And now with the advent of carriers, it's very easy to come out here. The facility itself is buried inside the inner ring system. Once again, approaching facilities like this, where they're covered in mist and fog and rocks, I think it's one of the most awe-inspiring things about Elite Dangerous. This does lead me to wonder, why does Frontier put a lot of these deep space installations in nebulas? I mean, think about it. I mean, really think about it. Of all the locations in the galaxy, they put them in nebulas. Confirmed contact, line crew dispatched. It's good to have you with us, Commander. I mean, I suppose there's a certain logic to it, but we can explore that another time. Now, here in Gorgon, there's not much of a market. In fact, there's not much of anything here. As you can see, there is pretty much only a market and contacts. Anything else here isn't really worth much, in my opinion. Of course, you can always increase your standings with Gorgon through Universal Cartographics or even running some passenger missions. But honestly, I would just use this station as a waypoint, provided you're traveling without a carrier makes a good place to lay your head while you try to plot out your next series of jumps. Plus that first moon does offer a hell of a view. You can use it as a launching point and catapult yourself out of this planetary system. Almost all of the systems nearby provide a fantastic view, including this ring beauty. I call it the Ring Pearl. Last but certainly not least, this nebula offers no shortage of reality bending monsters. It's filled to the brim with black holes. You can just see how many hot blue stars are in this area just by watching their light get wrapped around this black hole. It's almost like being in the center of the galaxy at Sagittarius A star. As you watch all the lights from all the stars in the galaxy get caught and distorted by the monstrous black hole in the center. And given the size of this particular black hole and several others that I have found, there was clearly enough nebula material to not only form these monsters, but to fill the night sky with these hot young blue stars.
So after spending a week in the Beacon Nebula, the shadow and light departed on Friday. This was the final waypoint for the Formidine expedition. So you're probably wondering what the Shadow and Light will be doing for the next few weeks. Well, at least for the immediate future at the request of one of our passengers, the Shadow and Light will be located in the Coles 173 sector. That's right, it will be in Guardian space as there are several passengers on board who has never been there. So I decided to take them over. They're also hoping to be able to gain access to some of the Guardian technology that's offered there, as well as to do some research into the Guardian's history. After that, the Shadow and Light will be located in the bubble for a time while it refuels to prepare for the next expedition. For the time being, three major waypoints are planned. Hawking's Gap, the Conflux, and Sagittarius A Star. Don't get me wrong, there are many other locations I do want to share with you, but the three major ones are those. For both the Conflux and Hawking's Gap, I'm definitely hoping to find evidence of a megaship or two out there. With regards to Sagittarius A Star, I'm hoping to find more evidence for the signal. That strange ethereal sound you get when you point your ship in the direction of the galaxy with the center of the galaxy highlighted. Now there's a lot of details out there regarding pinpointing the signal, but no one's been able to truly do it yet. And I'm hoping that we can lend our expertise to the matter. <laughs> or at the very least our time. Well, that's all for today. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please give it a like. It really does help my channel. Even though this is an end to the Formidine Rift Expedition, this is not an end to my videos. I do have several Elite Dangerous videos planned for the coming weeks, including a follow-up video to my famous My Thoughts on Carriers. Until then, stay safe and I hope to see you all in the black.